Hi, I'm Cider Spider, and I'm on a journey to get every available achievement in Final Fantasy XIV. This monumental grind takes countless hours of gameplay over the span of several years, and I'm taking it on one week at a time. So, let's get started. Alright, welcome to Yulemore, idiots. Uh, guess what we are going to be doing today? Well, I don't know what the title of this video is yet, but you probably already figured it out. That's right, it's crafting. I figured after three grueling weeks in Zadnar finishing the war and whatnot, becoming Gunhilder's Blade, it would be a nice time to slow down and take it a little bit easy with some handicrafts. So that's what we're going to be doing. We've obviously talked about crafting before. There are many, many topics to cover. I think I've just about brushed up against all of them. But what I want to start with today is something I haven't done yet, which we can find all the way down at the bottom of the list. There it is. Resplendent tools. Now, in Shadowbringers, for some reason, there were two sets of quote-unquote relic tools for crafters. Because that's right, crafters also get relics. But normally, they only get one per expansion. In Shadowbringers, the actual crafting relic was this. It was the Sky Builder tools. These were tied to the Ishgard restoration, and the process to obtain them was significant, but before Sky Builder's tools were resplendent tools, and the process to obtain these was even more significant. It actually was far harder than the Sky Builder's tool, and let me show you why. So in order to get a resplendent tool, you have to buy it out of a shop. See, there it is right there, the Resplendent Cauldron Fiend's Alembic. But it doesn't cost money, it costs 60 Resplendent Alchemist's final materials. Where do you get those? Well, you have to buy them out of a shop. And what do you purchase those with? Well, Resplendent Alchemist Component C, which you have to create out of Resplendent Alchemist Material C, which you get from Resplendent Alchemist Component B, which you craft out of Material B, which you buy with Component A. So to put that into actual simple terms, basically what you have to do is craft 30 expert recipes for each tier from A to B to C. And upon finishing that, you can trade the final product for a Resplendent tool which is 10 eye levels lower than the crafting relic that got added later in the expansion, which is far easier to get. But very importantly, the crafting that you have to do for these relics is not ordinary crafting. Like I said, these are expert recipes. And if you don't know what that means, well, I'm about to show you. Here in my inventory are 44 Resplendent Alchemist Material Cs. I need 60, and so in order to get the 16 remaining, I'm going to have to perfectly craft 8 component Bs. But remember, in order to craft component B, I need material B, which can only be bought by trading in component A. In order to make component A, we need to buy the first material out of the script shop. So we're gonna go ahead and get eight of these and start crafting. Seems pretty simple, right? Obviously this all makes a lot of sense and is very easy to follow. So check this out. I'm about to make a crafting tutorial for goobers. Here's what the ordinary crafting menu looks like. We can open our calculations tab in order to see exactly how high of a number we're going to be able to reach with every single one of our actions. If you're a dummy bear, you might not understand how to actually do this, but it's pretty simple. Almost every action that we commit will lower the durability by a set amount depending on the action. If the durability hits zero, we fail the craft. Game over. The goal is to fill the progress bar. So as you can see here, it only needs to go up to 37. But if we want to do high quality crafting, we need to increase the quality bar. And the higher the quality bar goes, the higher percent chance we have of getting high quality. If we max it out, it's 100%. So since this is a low level craft, I could pretty much do it in one go. So now that our quality's maxed, we've lost 10 durability, but we have plenty of durability left to finish the progress, which will only take one go. Easy. So easy a savage raider can do it. Now it's time to get funky. Hands on your knees, hands on your knees, and knees on the floor because you're about to get utterly shrecked since we're about to do an expert craft. So first things first, we need to make component A. As you can see, I've got my eight materials. I need to make eight of these. Holy crap. And here's where things get interesting. So as you can see, the progress is much higher. The quality is disgustingly high. And this is also a collectible, not a normal craft. And so there's not a percentage chance based on the quality bar. There's a set correlation one to one. And these little uh, colored doodads right here show you how much quality you need to get to hit the amount of collectability that you need to trade in the part for the next material. So with the resplendent tools, if we hit the yellow zone, we'll get half of the return. 
If we hit the green zone, we get the full return, which means if I trade in one component A that's green quality, I'll get two material Bs, which is how many I need to make one component B. Basically what all this means is, the higher quality your crafts, the fewer materials you need to buy for this. If your crafts fall just short of being perfect, you end up needing twice as many, and it sucks. But with expert crafting, there's something interesting, which is the condition meter. This doesn't exist in normal crafting, but basically what it does is add a unique modifier at random every time I complete any action at all. Wait a minute, why am I explaining this? This isn't a tutorial. Let me just show you what happens when I click some buttons. We're gonna go... Muscle memory. Oh, I forgot to eat crafting food. Ah, crap. Hey, you know how there's raid food? There's also crafting food, and it's even more important than raid food. So normally you would buff your stats before starting one of these crafts because it's gonna make it a lot easier. Oh, well, anyways. We're gonna go ahead and uh, final appraisal, veneration, rapid synthesis. It failed. Rapid synthesis. Now oh, come on. Rapid synthesis. Bro, are you kidding me? Rapid synthesis. Tremble before my divinity. I'm literally gonna quit this game. Uh, this might be salvageable? Oh no, okay, let, let, all right, all right, let's fix this. Ready to go, manipulation. Oh, now we get pliant, screw this game. All right, let's get a master's mend on there, pliant, innovation. We're gonna just work on the quality, we'll figure out the progress later. Give me a hasty touch. Oh, come on! I don't know why I play this game, I really don't. Why do I do this to myself? I could quit, I could live a good life. Bros, I could be playing Minecraft right now. Why do I do this? All right, uh, if we get centered, we should use that on rapid synth because we're gonna need that. Bro! Allow me to explain for the plebeians at home. Centered increases action success rate by 25%. Rapid synthesis has a 50% success rate. Therefore, with centered, the success is 75%. I have not succeeded at a single rapid synthesis yet, even that last one that had 75% odds of succeeding. Oh my god! I think Yoshi P must be stopped, he's a menace. I don't even, like, I, I don't think there's even any possibility of me succeeding at this craft. Yeah, we're out of crafting points. That's the other thing I forgot to mention. See the gauge at the top there? CP89, that's crafting points. Every action that you do requires crafting points. And eventually you just run out. If I do the utmost to conserve points here, I might... Oh my god. I've failed every single action I've attempted! Shout out to Yoshi P. The P stands for Play Minecraft instead. Is this the most cursed craft, like, literally ever? This can't be statistically possible. Oh my god, I finally succeeded at something. I don't even know what to do anymore. I kinda just wish the heavens would fall. Do you think the heavens will fall? I hope they do. Oh my god, now I start succeeding when I've got no crafting points and no durability. Wow. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's just look at it. Mm. Yep, <laughs> looks screwed. Well, this is the single worst crafting attempt literally of my entire life. Maybe it's not too late to just go back to Zadner and do duels again. All right, well, now it's time to show you what I already know. It is too late to beg mercy. So there you go. <laughs> That's expert recipes. I need to do a lot of these. I don't think you guys understand how many of these you have to do. Here's what's crazy as well. These are shadow bringers expert recipes, I'm wearing Endwalker crafting gear. Now, mind you, I don't have the highest level gear right now. I don't have the best stats that I could possibly have, but I'm still two tiers of gear higher than what would have been available when these crafts were added to the game. And as you just saw, I failed miserably due to bad luck. So I didn't do any of these when they were current content, but I can't even imagine the immense suffering that idiots must have withstood to get these weapons, these tools, which were immediately outclassed by the crafting relics, which were significantly easier to obtain. Basically, y'all got scammed. Oh my god, I'm getting scammed. I'm getting scammed! Stop scamming me! Oh, great, yeah, okay. Ten durability to spare. This is actually honestly fine. So we just turn on manipulation, then we put on innovation. As long as we use prudent touch, we're not going to lose any durability. Uh, when centered comes up, I think I'm going to try and do hasty touch because the more crafting points I can save, the better. For this point, let's do a master's mend. Normally I would mainline manipulation, but I mean, we might as well mend, it's free. Oh wow, we're getting a lot of pliants. Okay, 
Our luck is actually turning around. This one is gonna be fine, I think. So there's a couple of important numbers here for my current gear level. If I get to like 9 or 10,000 quality, I'll have enough to where my final combo can finish it. So what we do is Great Strides, which doubles my next quality action, Innovation, which adds 50%, and then Byragot's Blessing, which improves quality based on the number of inner quiet stacks I have. We're currently maxed out with 10. So as you can see, this is going to do 5,000 quality with one hit. Easy. And now since we're in the green zone, we got the maximum collectability. We'll get the full return when I trade these in. Let's just uh, finish up the progress. Okay, and now we take these back to the exchange. There's our component A. And as you can see, since we got the maximum collectability, it gives us two materials instead of one. Two materials is enough to then make component B. So that's pretty much the whole shebang. I'm going to work on that a little bit. I'll get back to you when I've got all of my uh, material C's sorted out. And then we'll look at getting our final ingredients. Crafting is fun. Okay, I got all those done. Let's go ahead and get them traded in. Check this out. We got 60 of these now. Now we can try the final recipe, component C. I've not attempted this yet. Let's see how it goes. Oh my god. 5400 versus 16,000. This is going to be rough. So a big thing with crafting is, when it comes to difficult recipes like this, you almost always want to try and max out your progress bar first. That way you know that no matter where your quality ends up, you'll always have enough moves left in the end to finish your progress. It's not as useful with collectibles because you know that if you fall short of the minimum collectability, then your craft is junk no matter what. But if you're making actual tradable items, then you want to make sure that you're able to finish the craft because failing it means that you lose your materials and then you don't have anything to show for it. So yeah, that's just crafting 101. And yeah, since I'm in Endwalker gear, I can kind of brute force this a little bit. I can craft very clumsily. And there we go. We successfully completed our first component C. I need to do this 29 more times. So I'll, uh, I'll holla at you guys once we find out, uh, how that has gone. All right, I've gone and done it. Look at this. I have 59 out of 60. You know where my 60th final material is at? It doesn't exist. I failed one of the crafts. I didn't get it to maximum quality. I fell just shy of that. And because of that, I only got half of the return. Therefore, I am one material short. So we have to do the whole tree over again in order to get that last material. So let's spend 50 more white scripts and start all the way back on component A. Oh boy. And I already know you're typing it already. You've probably already posted the comment. Someone is going to say, why don't you just use a macro for this? So now is the point where I will acknowledge that yes, you can technically, if your stats are high enough, you can technically macro these old Shadow Ringers expert crafts. You can also technically Shut up. And blessing. There we go. Easy component A. Now give me my component B materials. Woohoo. Oh, I just love crafting. Well, I love complaining anyway. I should probably clarify. I do actually enjoy crafting. I think this is good chill fun. It's just, it's better when I'm not on a time crunch trying to get as many things done as I can in a week to make a wacky video. This is the type of grind I actually kind of enjoy because it's not completely mindless, but it's also not super intensive. You know, I could pause at any time, leave it on this screen and walk away, go get something to eat, come back. It'll still be here waiting for me to press the next button. But there's just enough thinking involved that I have to use my brain a little bit, you know, unless I macro it. And so this is the perfect grind to just do in your spare time slowly over a long period of time. Time. Normally, that's how I would engage with this. But since I'm a hashtag content creator, I gotta stress a little bit more about how quickly things get done. I gotta make sure that I get enough achievements by the end of the week to have something to show you guys. And so here we are, complaining a lot. Wee And there's our component B. Now, it's gonna drive me absolutely insane if I perfect this material C and end the grind with 61 final materials. So we're gonna make sure that we land in the yellow, not the green this time. And blessing. Bow! Alright, easy yellow. Let's bring this thing home. And there we go. Go ahead and trade that in. And what do you know? 60 final materials. And so now, all I have to do is open the resplendent tool exchange and simply exchange these for my resplendent tool. BAM! And there's retooled resplendent cauldron fiends alembic. 10 points. 
pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. We got our alembic. 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 So that is my very first resplendent tool. Let's have a look at it. So first of all, it's gigantic. You might notice that it's gigantic. This is actually the one that's a big USB stick. Yeah, look at that. I could fit so many questionable pictures of Moogles on this thing, hypothetically speaking. And it glows. I don't know why it doubles in size when it's on your back, but it does, so that's pretty cool. But here's the fun part, right? You see, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but there's obviously not just one resplendent tool. There's one for every single crafter, for a total of eight. Meaning there are 80 achievement points tied to these resplendent tools. And I'll have you know, getting the first 44 of my uh, material C's took me basically all day because I very inefficiently worked on it while streaming. Go follow the stream, by the way. But doing the remaining steps also took a couple of hours. If I had to average it out, I would estimate this is probably a five to six hour grind at the pace that I did it at. And that's per relic, which means a good solid 40 hours is probably going to have to go into finishing these if I do them at the same rate. But wait a minute. What if? What if? What if I wasn't an idiot? What if I did these in the absolute best gear I could be wearing instead of whatever the heck this crap is? Well, let's find that out. So it's worth mentioning that I, of course, have all of my jobs to 90. I've maxed every single crafter. I believe I've unlocked all of the master recipes. All of my gatherers are maxed out. This means I can gather any item in the game. I can craft any item in the game. So surely it wouldn't be that hard to make myself a better set of gear to get my eye level up to date and get my stats better than this. Well, yeah, you're right. It wouldn't be that hard. But what it would be is time consuming. And what I would be is lazy. You know how much money I made from Bazia in the past couple months? I don't have to craft and gather anymore. That's what plebeians do. You know how I'm gonna get my gear? I'm gonna buy it off the market board, like a true Chad gamer. And what's it gonna cost? Well, everything. But frankly, that's a price I'm willing to pay. Oh god, this is adding up fast, guys. Well, at least the necklace is cheap. Oh god, why is the grinding wheel 750 grand? Uh, this wheel ain't even grinded AF. Alright. Usually curl is the cheapest world, let's see what they got. Oh, 400k still sucks, but you know what? We're just gonna assume that that's the best price, but it's probably not. So now that I'm a couple million in the hole, let's grab a shovel because this is not even worth putting on if it isn't melded. On the bright side, as you can see, I have an absolute ton of control materia because up until now, I had always used my custom delivery scripts to just dump into these giant piles of materia. I've pretty much spent all of my scripts for the past several months on these. Now, mind you, this pile of materia, this 210s and uh, 309s, is worth round about four to five mil. I'm probably going to use all of it. So let me introduce you to overmelding, in case you don't know what the deal is with that. Basically, it's the fastest way to watch your money burn. Let's start with this hat. So the green circles show you how many slots each piece has for materia, but regardless of the number of slots, you can still overmeld a total of five materia to every piece of gear. It's just that each slot is how many guaranteed melds you get. After you fill the slots, the more material you slap on it, the higher your chance for failure. So we're going to bump up control, because control is the quality increasing stat. It's generally the most important. So let's put our two control tens in there. Easy. Now we can put a third control 10, but as you can see, the chance of success is only 17%. Now that's like a 1 in 6, it's really not that bad, but with each subsequent materia we add, the chance will get lower. And 1 in 6 is just the average odds. It could be worse than that if we're unlucky. Okay, I got that one on the first try, we didn't break anything, so that's good. And now we're going to want to add another piece of control. This one only has a 10% chance of success. We lost five materia in the process, that's pretty good. Now I could add two more crafting points onto this hat to max it out at 11, and I think I'd like to do that. But crafting point materia usually is some of the most expensive, so uh... Oh, here we go. Yeah, let's use that. Alright. So now we have to do this for every single piece of gear. It's gonna be very annoying, so I'll uh... 
I'll just get on to it. Wow, so far my material luck has been really good. Let's just max out the crafting points. These tiny amounts of crafting points might seem inconsequential, but I assure you they are not. Oh god, for a materia 5, it's 5 grand. You know, the 7s are actually cheaper. They're still about 5 grand though if we round up. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that materia 9 is cheaper than materia 7 right now? Okay, never mind then. I thought I could save money by going back in time. But I guess the market always knows. Alright, so far so good. So oddly enough, crafting point materia is actually cheaper than control materia right now, so we're gonna prioritize saving control materia where we can. 7% chance, ay ouch. I got it on the first try. I'm just too good. Alright, 5% chance, guys. It's kinda nice that this is the closest FF14 ever gets to a Korean MMO. Korean gamers are built different. Their chances for stuff like this gets into the fractions of percentages. Also, I broke 18 materia on that last meld, so that sucks. Oh god, there goes 19 materia. Alright, Yoshi P, don't let me down now, we're almost done. Oh! I lost all of them and it didn't meld. Well... What are we in for? Oh no, don't make me do it, don't make me do it, ah! Right, come on, come on, be good to me. Okay, only lost six. Only lost 20. Okay, time for the weapon melds. On the bright side, my luck with control materia is good, but it almost doesn't feel like a bright side because I bought all those with my own scripts, so they were kind of free. It doesn't hit the same when I didn't spend gil on it. You know, all things considered, this isn't bad. We started with 200 command 10s and uh, 300 command 9s, so yeah, we're down a few, but uh, ultimately this was a pretty lucky melding session. It could have been a lot worse. Please don't screw me over on the last meld. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. 53 lost. All right, well. You know, they say crafting is one of the easiest ways to make money in this game. Anyway, let's see how our stats compare. 3,100 craftsmanship versus 3,500 control. That's what we've got right now. Crafting points sitting at 564. Equip all the new gear. Yeah, 3,800 and 4,000. And we climbed up almost 40 crafting points. So that's a pretty big step up. Also, the glam somehow still works. Yeah, we'll go ahead and keep that. So let's just go ahead and buy all 30 of our materials. I've actually got enough scripts to do so. And I just want to find out if having max stats now makes a noticeable difference or not. Wait, hold on. I forgot to food up. Trembled. Dang it. Trembled. Hey, stop that. Trembled. Bruh. Well, stats can't fix my RNG, Trembled. unfortunately. Oh my god. Okay. What are we gonna do about this? Um... Let's just work on quality until I get something that can uh, pay for my my mend. What? Oh, that was the wrong button. These aren't the same hot bars. Ah, crap. Screw this game, dude. You want to know why no one crafts? Yeah, you know, suddenly I, I feel like I understand why nobody does crafting. Bro, really? Why? Like, like, what are the odds of this? This can't be normal. Alright, well, let's just build the quality. I should have high enough stats to brute force my way through this craft, even despite atrocious luck. I guess I used all of my luck on the meld. Trembled. Wow. Can I at least get, like, a pliant? I haven't even had a pliant once. Alright, there's our quality maxed out. Um... I don't even know what to do here. This is... Oh, thank goodness, pliant. Alright. We're gonna master mend. I might honestly turn on, uh, oh, I don't have enough for waste knot. Well, this is awkward. Kind of cringe. I'm gonna see if I can roll for another pliant, I guess. Centered means we want rapid. Uh, we're rapidly losing durability. I should have done a veneration there. That was a bad, bad call. We need 2,000 more progress. Uh, I mean, if I venerate rapid, I can make it, but that's purely RNG and it has to work. Yeah, I could do it in one but I only have two attempts. It's 50-50, so statistically, it should work. But realistically, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, guys, I don't know. Well, let's roll. Uh, tricks of the trade. Oh wait, we got sturdy. Yeah, that doesn't really help. That means we get a third attempt. Let's go for it. Oh my God, thank goodness. So yeah, I guess to answer the question of does having maxed stats even help? 
as you can see, so much of this relies on sheer luck anyway that, yeah, max stats help, I guess. They help mitigate bad luck, but they won't save you. Because, you see, rapid synthesis is the highest amount of progress you can increase in a single step, but it only has a 50% success rate. You usually use it in your opener, right about here, because this is where you want to max out your progress. But if your luck is anything like mine while goldsmithing, you will fail it every single time, even though it's statistically improbable. Just like that, see? One more try. Wow. Just wow. I mean, like, seriously. Like, actually. Like, genuinely. Like, oh my god. My lucky me. We finally got it. Now that it no longer matters. Uh, let's try again. Yeah, I should have known that was coming. So yeah, anyway, like I was saying about the crafting points, having so many extra crafting points is actually a huge help here. That's the one place that gear really does make a, a very big difference. Because with expert crafting, your crafting points are your lifeline. It's how many aces you can fit up your sleeves, basically. So that even with such terrible luck as mine, you might have a chance. Oh, come on, Malia Bull. I really truly cannot believe this. 50% of the time, you'll fail it 100% of the time. Yeah, see, here we find ourselves again. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to finish this one. I've burned all my points. I, I, I might have enough to recover. Maybe. Right, let's just dump Blessing here. The only odds of me actually getting anything useful done here... Um... Oh, uh, we might have cut it too close, guys. To be fair, I could not have predicted the level of failure that I was going to be presented with. Like, there's really nothing I can do when Rapid Synthesis fails 10 out of 11 times. Yeah, that's just, I mean, that's that's the end of the road there. It's, wow. Alright, well, back to the drawing board. We gotta start from Component 1 again. Bro, what am I being punished for? Trembled. Why? What What did I do wrong? Alright, we got our component again. Let's try and make component B now. Hold on, my craftsman's draught fell off. Yeah, you know, my maxed out blessing does 5400 with current stats. It was doing 5200 earlier, so it seems like the difference between my previous gear set and this gear set is really not that big. The gain in crafting points was by far the biggest takeaway. Everything else is like a small percentage buff. Still helpful when these things are so temperamental, but nevertheless, uh, I wasn't really much worse off before. Oh, I should've used manipulation there. Oh, cool. The gods gave me a second chance. Finally, some luck. The bright side is that if I do succeed at the opener, you know, if, if I get progress maxed out early on, the rest of the craft is trivial. It's virtually guaranteed even if I waste points all over the place because I have so much overhead. But it does rely on that opening progress build being successful, which, as you've seen, it isn't always. But yeah, so we're over 11 here. That means we can go ahead and dump our finisher and there we go a lovely component c which i can then trade for two final pieces now if i just do all of that 29 more times we can have the goldsmithing resplendent tool to go along with our alchemist one i've also forgotten to mention until now that is that there's another achievement a ninth achievement for getting all of the resplendent tools as you can see i have one out of eight and since blameless tools here is a 20 point achievement it means the entire resplendent grind is a total of 100 points which sounds like just the thing i need it's also how you get the title, The Indefatigable, which is pretty swaggy, and I must have it. So yeah, I think I want to see how many more of these I can finish in a short amount of time. I'll holla at you again when something interesting happens. But holy crap, it's 3am, why am I still awake? Okay, so what ended up happening was, in a rum-induced frenzy, I did in fact finish another resplendent tool. It was the goldsmithing one, it happened on stream, I will show you the insert right here. We got our 60th goldsmithing goldsmith's final material, which means it is now time to turn them in. What have we here? The resplendent gem fiends mallet. Give me that. And there's retooled resplendent gem fiends mallet. Uh, 10 points. Uh, look at it. Isn't it glorious? We did it. Uh, does it look glorious? Meh. I mean, 
But after that, having done two straight days of expert crafts and my luck having been what it has been, I decided to finish the week with some nice relaxing S-Rank hunts because today is something called S-Rank Day. You see, every time the servers get taken down for either a patch or maintenance or anything like that, it resets the timer on all of the S-Rank spawns, which means you can predict exactly when they'll be available to spawn. So the hunting community gets together on these special occasions and spawns all of the S-Ranks in rapid succession. So unfortunately, all of the achievements that I need for S-Ranks are so long-term that I haven't got any. But I started today with 300 total S-Ranks killed. I am now at 360, so in a single day, I've managed to gain an entire 1.2% of the S-Rank kills that I need for Ultimate Thrill Seeker. So that's been all around pretty freaking awesome. Unfortunately, since we know Dawn Trail is coming real soon, this is probably going to be the last S-Rank day until the next expansion. I had to miss all the previous ones due to work, but now thanks to my stupid achievement hunting exploits, I can actually try to join in on them when they do happen. So yeah, pretty happy with that. But anyway, speaking of streams, I also, over the weekend, finished the Manderville quests that I had not done yet, which was the latest two from Endwalker, which of course resulted in another achievement, identified flying gentlemen, as well as Reforge Majestic Manderville Codex. So if you want to see me do things like Manderville quests and whatnot, definitely go and follow the stream on Twitch. That is where most of that will typically happen. But anyway, even though this was actually kind of a slow week as far as achievements go, I spent an absolute ton of time working on expert crafts and Mandervilles and whatnot. I find myself in a familiar situation where even though I didn't get that many overall achievements, this this week, I am poised to get a lot next week. There are quite a few fun things that I'm really close to completing, and I might also look into finishing the remaining six resplendent tools if I can bring myself to suffer through that grind. We shall see. But I'm glad I've been able to bring you guys along for some of that suffering this week. However, that is going to be about all the time we've got, so let's go ahead and roll the outro. Hi, welcome to the outro. This past week was definitely relaxing after slaving away in Zadner for so long, and I walked away with a grand total of four achievements with a combined value of 40 points. This brought my LOL achievement score up to 16,345, but I actually lost a rank and went from 139 back down to 140. 40. Don't worry, I will be collecting the kneecaps of whoever's in rank 139. But for now, I'm going to get back to mining and crafting and also ignoring several essays in the comments telling me how to do expert crafts better. One like equals one essay. Okay, bye.